Ooh. Okay, so don't just love it when you watch a film and it starts with action. Okay, you've got the car chase, you've got the people jumping off the bridge and the... the, the oh, and you, you just... Wouldn't be... Hold on, wait, 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 whoa! Whoa, 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 what's happening here? What's happening here? Like, we've got some action going on. Right, you just... Oh, you seem out of breath, young man. Oh, I've been chased, Roger. God, okay, that, he's out of breath. And, hold on. Who are you? We're the Captain Tribe and we're trying to um, catch him to rob him. Okay, so you are the Catching Tribe? The Catching Tribe? So, hold on, Catching Tribe. I don't think any of us know where you're from. Okay, so do you know where you live? I, I, I think you've got an interpreter with you as well, haven't you? <laughs> okay, she was a little bit slower. You know, she wasn't as fast as you, but I think she's a good interpreter. So, Catching Tribe, where do they live? So, we're from Lissuland. Lissuland. Well, who knows where Lissuland is? Okay, we've got one person just quietly going like that, okay. Okay, well, let's have a look. Let's find out. You just don't go anywhere. I'm a bit worried about you. Okay, so, let's see. Okay, Lissuland, right. Okay, if you look right up in the corner, okay, you've got the tall corner up there. And you've got all, all that kind of beigey area is China. Okay? So we've got China, and below that, uh, or to the side, you've got India. But actually, where that little red kind of rectangle is, that's southwest China. Okay? And that make, takes you into the big picture. And right next to what used to be called Burma for the old ones, uh, but Myanmar is actually this area of green, and that's where the Lisu people live, the Kachin tribe, you. And what's that you got in your hand? A spear. Uh, I think you need to turn around, okay, and just tell everyone, what have you got? A spear. Okay, what can you, what can you do with that spear? Throw at people. <laughs> okay, you can attack people, okay. Right, sorry if you're of a sensitive nature, okay, <laughs> but, okay, we're, this is real life. Okay, so there you are from the Kachin tribe, and it's that part of southwest China. And basically, one last question what are you trying to do? We're trying to catch him and rob him. <laughs> okay, did you hear that? He's trying to catch him and rob him. What do you think of that, Sophie? This is not quite going the way I thought it would. Okay. Right, okay, right. Well, actually, I'm glad I was here, okay? So I'm going to just stop this, okay? So it's very nice meeting you. Again, I'm sure you're very nice on the inside, but I don't think it's particularly good to be chasing him and trying to rob him, even though I think Sophie will be on your side, okay? <laughs> so, all right. So I'm going to say a big thank you to you and also to your interpreter. So thank you, but you can take your seat. So I think a round of applause. <laughs> okay. Whoever thought preaching could be so scary, okay? So, and, hold on, just get my crib on this one. I've got more questions for you. Who, who are you? I'll just get my breath back a wee bit. Sorry, it's a lot of running, you know. Yeah, I'm I very see that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So my my name's James Fraser, and I'm a uh, I'm I'm from I'm from London originally. Okay, just hold yeah. it, James Fraser. <laughs> okay, we're we're just gonna do a lightness check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got that. Yeah, I think so you it fit. Me a few the, years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you fit Face ID. Yes, okay, yeah. so we're good. So, so you're James yeah. Fraser, and born yeah. 1886, 1938. Okay, yes, yeah, so where are you from? So I'm from London originally. Yeah. Yeah, you can tell by my accent, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay, so what were you doing at London? Well, do you know, I was, uh, I, was, I was born in London and I was, I was studying at a really good university to be an engineer. Okay. Um, and, you know, I was a great, I was really enjoying it in London. I had loads of friends, a great social life. Um, I was, you know, I was, I was really into music as well. I was a really talented pianist. Right. Um, we used to play in loads of concerts and everything. So, so life was great in London. Yeah, I was having a great time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. so there you are, a student. Yep. Okay, in London, uh -huh. studying engineering. Yep. And yet here you are, kind of being chased by a 
tribe person, catching right. someone from the catching tribe. Yeah, yeah. So, kind of, what happened next? Well, do you know, it was, it was interesting. I was, in, I was at university one day, and this man came around with all these leaflets. And it was all about the millions of people around the world who didn't know anything about Jesus at all. And he challenged us all to, to see if we could maybe go out and tell them about Jesus. And that just completely changed my life. And, and I just knew from then on that, that that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that that's what God was calling me to do. Wow. Okay. So, so you know, what I, did you do? Well, do you know, I, I signed up to this missionary agency. Yeah. And they sent me off to uh, southwest China. Yeah. Wow. To share the news about Jesus with all the people there. Wow. So, so yeah. But it wasn't easy. I mean, because I, I, we had to leave my family, leave, leave all my friends. Um, and, you know, I had to learn Chinese. And that's it's not an easy language to learn. And I had to sort of pretty much teach myself. So it was, it was difficult, definitely, yeah. Boy, that so. sounds quite a story, quite an adventure, yeah. actually. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, you learn Chinese, but then, like the Lisu people, I guess you had to learn well, their language? Know, that's, that's exactly right. So, I mean, the, the Lisu people live up in the mountains, and they speak any, any, a completely different language to Chinese. Yeah. So I had to learn that as well. And that's, it's not easy, because there's, no, there's no books that show you what to... Yeah. to learn so you had to kind of learn it from from other people and it was very difficult yeah wow okay well i think i'd like to say on behalf of us all it's been an incredible privilege to meet you james fraser thanks very much i know you've yeah. aged a little bit you know yeah. but actually yeah. and you've slowed down a little bit and i think it's good i intervened oh did you escape by the way everyone wants to know did you escape well, the you know, I've, i was uh, i'm always quite fast at the running so yeah i think i managed yeah. to get away from that, so, yeah. okay you hear that, Callum? Your dad thinks he can run faster than you. Right? <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think we should say a huge thank you to Callum. Uh, to Callum. <laughs> to James Fraser. Well, I'm... <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Well, an introduction there, eh? James Fraser. Let's just step into this story just a little bit more. I just want to take uh, a, a few moments this morning, just to tell a little bit more of the story, but also just to bring some of the, the, the challenge, kind of, what were the dates? 1886, 1938, you know, it's a whole different, the world was so different then. And yet there's something that God did with that man that can speak into our lives today. And that's incredibly exciting. Children, young people, okay? I believe there's some things we can learn from this guy, James Fraser. Fraser. But let's just uh, kind of unpack the challenge a bit more. It's a huge challenge that, that James kind of said yes to when he said yes to God. So that area was incredibly remote. It's very, very difficult to get to in those days, particularly in those days. It's an area full of mountains, and, uh, and in fact, the mountains, some of them are about 19,000 feet. So that's almost about, I think the maths is, about six times as high as the mountains that we're used to seeing here in the fells. So you've got a huge mountainous area. It could be very cold there. It could be very snowy. There were bitter, bitter winters. He often lived in a... In, 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 it stayed in places that weren't very weatherproof and they were cold, they were damp. Life was uncomfortable. Not only that, as James himself told us, he had to learn Chinese, which is hard enough as it is, and then he had to learn a language where there was no written, it wasn't written down at all. In fact, he was the first person to begin to write down the Lisu alphabet. So there's language, there's the land, there was where he lived. And, but also, he, he's, he wanted to tell people about Jesus, but these people, like our catching tribes person here, they actually believed in evil spirits. They really believed in bad stuff. So much so that their homes would have little shelves in with all sorts of bad and weird stuff was on. It's a huge challenge. They'd never, ever, ever, ever heard about Jesus before. And even just eating food. There were times when for months he had nothing to eat apart from rice. Now at one point in his diary he actually said, I just long for a bit of cheese. 
Can you imagine that? That the thing you long, long for more than anything else is a bit of cheese. It was tough. One day he got really ill with a tropical fever that most people died from. He could easily have died from it. But he lived. But you know, with all those things going on, there's something else. Some of his bigger, biggest battles, and this is where we really need to hear this, were inside of himself. He got incredibly discouraged. He battled with depression. He had all sorts of thoughts going on in his mind. He just wanted to give up, give up, give up. And that's the same, whatever time we're living in. The same stuff goes on in us that we still battle with. And then what's more, he got chased by robbers. That was a true story. And what's more, there was a bit of a war going on as well. It was a huge challenge. But into all of that, you think, why do it? Why go? Why not stay and be an engineer? Why not stay and play concerts as a classical pianist? Why? It's because something, or rather someone, had gripped his heart with something better, which was to tell people about Jesus. Because he knew that people were living in darkness and they needed the good news that Jesus only could bring. That's why he did it. And again, that speaks to our lives today. It's not that we've got to now go to southwest China, but right where we are, people are living in darkness and they need to hear the good news about Jesus. That is really the most important thing. Jesus came to set people's lives free. And really, that was the story. You see, there were no believers in Jesus there at all. They, as I said, they did believe in these dark, evil forces. And Fraser's desire was to see people saved. Do you remember how we started this morning when Paul said, let's just shout out the names of Jesus? And one of the first names was Saviour. He wanted to see these people saved. And he learned to preach, to speak in Chinese, and, and he got his message down to four very clear points. Number one, Jesus died on the cross for you. Number two, Jesus rose again. Number three, you need to repent. You need to turn from your old way of living, the dark way of living, and turn to the light that only Jesus can bring. And number four, when you do that, Jesus promises forgiveness. Everything is made new. And he learned that, and he preached it. And that was really the big story he was bringing into these people's lives. And he wanted to share this news, and he began sharing with a few families up in the tri uh, up in the villages, way, way, way up in the way up in the mountains. A few of them heard, a few of them responded and became Christians. But then he'd go back to visit them, and something had happened, and they'd go back to their old ways, and it was so discouraging. Let's hear that. Not everything we do for God goes well. Sometimes there's real challenges. But he kept praying, and he actually believed God for thousands of these people, like our Kachin tribesmen, to become Christian. He believed for thousands. And in the end, he saw hundreds become Christians. Things just seem, uh, it, it, it says that by 1918, 600 had been saved. Isn't that wonderful? In that type of area, 600 got saved. 
But the incredible thing about this story is that after he died, that actually the church in the Lissu land just grew and grew and grew. And in recent figures, in 1950, there were over f- almost 15,000 believers there. Isn't it incredible what God can do. You see, God's always wanting to do a bigger thing than just our own lives. And yet he uses us in it. By 1995, that number had risen to over 100,000. It's a remarkable story. And yet, he knew such discouragement and such difficulty. But one little story in the big story was this. There was a time he set up his table. He was in a marketplace and he was at, not quite in the Lissu land, he's just on the edge of it at that point. And it was a pretty wet day and all the rest of it. Anyway, someone walked by the table and just knocked it over. And he had all these leaflets. And they just fell on the ground. And in fact, a few mules, kind of boom, 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 they trod them in the ground and that was it. They were ruined. And, and a few people just, 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 just picked, picked them up and threw them away. But he noticed this six-year-old boy, okay, six-year-old, and he grabbed one of these books, had a red cover on it, and he ran away with it. And it was too late to stop him, and he thought, well, he's stolen it, but he hasn't really, because it's free anyway. So that was that. Well, this six-year-old boy lived up in the mountains, and his dad was called Mo. Okay, that's a funny name, isn't it? Mo, just Mo. Okay, and actually, he was a really, really, really good pastry chef in the village. So anyway, Mo's boy went home and he gave his dad this this little booklet, not knowing it was the Gospel of Mark. And so Mo said, and he gave it to his dad because he knew his dad was quite clever. He liked reading. He thought, there you go, Dad is a present. Yeah, it's cheap, wasn't it? And so he gave him his book, and that was it. Five years later, James Fraser was again in in a nearby village and he he was there, he was preaching those four things again. And there was a a theatre group that set up a stage and they were going to do an outdoor play. And and James Fraser thought, oh, there's an opportunity. I'm going to tell people about Jesus before they watch the play. I've already got a crowd there, so I'm going to tell them. So that's what he did. He, He began to tell them about Jesus, and at the end of his, his talk to these people, about 100 people listening, at the end of them, he said, OK, is there anyone here who wants to give their life to Jesus, to put their faith in Jesus, to follow him? And guess what? This guy came forward and said, I know about Jesus, but now I want to follow him. And do you know what his name was? Mo. Mo. Five years later, he'd read that Mark's gospel and God had been working through his word into that man's life. And five years later, he meets James Fraser. He becomes a Christian. They became firm friends. They began to work together. Do you know, God loves stories like that. He wants to use us in stories like that. Little stories that are part of the big story of God at work. So... What does this all mean for us? In his diary, James Fraser wrote this. Here then, we see God's way of success in our work. Whatever it may be, it's a trinity of prayer, of faith, and of patience. And really that's what his life would speak about. Not about a great man having a great event for Jesus, but a very normal person. But for having an adventure with a great Jesus. And he said prayer. It was a lesson he learned. Prayer, prayer, prayer. And he would write home to his friends and family in England, south of England, who were still kind of praying for him, and he just asked them, just pray, and pray more, 
In fact, he, at one point he said, what you pray in England is, 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 seeing what, is enabling God to work in this land. And that's true. God calls us to prayer. We want to see real big breakthroughs. We want to see people coming to know Jesus. Right where we are. What does God use in that? He uses our prayers. We pray. And a bit like that opening scary scene we all saw where Callum was wielding that sword, there's another weapon God puts in our hands and it's, this, it's prayer. Prayer, faith. He really believed that God could do something that people couldn't do. And we've got to get this into our thinking more and more and more. God is always calling us to do things that we can't do. It kind of, it's the way it is. It's not that Jesus just gives us help to be a little bit better. That's more like a, a self-improvement thing. No, the Christian life is about believing God for doing something we can't do. And that's what James Fraser believed. And even though in his life he went through huge disappointments, and just saw the hundreds, not the thousands, there were thousands in the end. Because he had faith, he believed God. Friends, let's believe God. Let's believe in a big God. Some of you young people... It's is the most important thing God wants you to know that he really is alive and he can do a big, big work. And then lastly, patience. Patience. And he learned that what God does, it doesn't happen just like that. It just doesn't happen in a moment. That actually it takes time. It takes time. And sometimes, some people can give themselves to the work of God and don't see it happening in their lifetime, but God still does it. Because God is faithful. That's what we've been singing about in our worship. God is utterly faithful. At first, from the Bible, we don't want to be, you to become lazy, but to imitate those who, through faith and patience, inherit what has been promised. Might be you're going through a tough time right now. Might be you're going through a very difficult time. Might be a time you've got lots of questions going on. It might be hard. It could be at school. It could be at work. It could be in all sorts of settings. God wants to encourage you in patience that is linked to faith and prayer. The three belong together. And as we do that, we will see God at work. God will do things. We'll find that there's a story that God is writing through our lives that's part of his bigger story. I'd love us to pray. We're going to respond. I hope that story has stirred something in you about what it is to have an adventure with Jesus. It's not just about the young ones. It's about every one of us. Giving ourselves to all that God calls us to, wherever that is. I'm going to ask Danette, do you want to come up? Um, we're going to sing again. But can we just stand together, please? Let's just open our hearts freshly. We've been opening our hearts as we've worshipped and, you know, hopefully as we've heard this story, but let's just be very deliberate right now. Just opening our hearts freshly to the Lord Jesus.
times haven't changed. Lots of the outward things of life have changed since those, you know, since the, that, that period of time. But in one sense, other things haven't changed. The need is just as great for people to know Jesus. The darkness in people's lives is just as real. And the message of hope is what people need to hear. Let's freshly just give ourselves to the Lord Jesus. Let's say, Lord, we want to step fully into the adventure, the calling, the things that you've given us to do. Thank you, Jesus. Help us, Lord, above all the gifts and the different things you've done in our lives, you've given us, help us above all else mm. to serve you, to love you, and be part of your bigger story. <clears throat> Help us, Lord, when I dare to ask you that you give us stories that will be very different to that Mo story. That's a one-off. But there's all sorts of one-off stories that I believe you want us to know and experience and to be part of in our lives. Would you give that to us more and more? Help those who are struggling with their faith. Give fresh patience. Give us fresh faith. Help us as we pray. Help us to grow in these things, we ask, for your name and for your glory, we ask. Amen. Let's worship together. Let's draw near to him.